We just got our first official glimpse into episode 2. On the Glitch Productions YouTube channel, they recently made a community post with this image right here showing a picture inside of Pomni's bedroom. And I gotta say, it looks really cool. But what if I told you guys that just seeing the inside of Pomni's bedroom will help us solve the entirety of episode 2? Yes, I know, it sounds crazy, but hear me out. If you guys keep up with the amazing Digital Circus lore, you would know that we have been waiting to see the inside of Pomni's bedroom for months now with the first leak of her room being over a month ago on the Wacky Watch website. And just a day before they posted what her bedroom looked like, they posted this image saying 100k likes to open the door. And it's safe to say that Glitch definitely stayed true to their word. Another thing that we can't just skip over is how this room will be significant in the episode and the show as a whole. Well, it's easy to just brush it off and say that it's promotional material to hype fans up, I think that Palmney's room will somehow play a very important role in the events of episode 2 of this series. If you look at the Wacky Watch website, and now this, it's quite easy to realize that there are quite a few references to Palmney's room just for it to be some sort of coincidence. The writers of the show are most likely showing us this content now to prepare us for what the next episode will entail. And I have a theory about what exactly this room means and what will happen inside of it. I think that Palmney's room will have some sort of hideout in it for Palmney and maybe more circus members to hang out in and plan a theory of how they'll escape. At the end of the pilot episode, we see that Palmney is already going crazy staying in the circus. And she has absolutely no reason to stay in this circus, so she's gonna try her absolute best to leave. But she can't do it alone. Once you think about it, the rest of the cast seems uninterested and dismissive of the exit. So who would help Palmney anyways? Well, recently, Gooseworks made a post on Twitter with this image, with a caption that reads, quote-unquote, that damn cameraman is falling asleep again, showing reflections on the shiny floors of the circus similar to how they showed off the original cast just before they released the pilot episode. But if you look closely at these reflections, we can see that these characters are all ones that we have never met met before. I think that these characters, being new, will have the exact same instincts as Palmney about finding an exit to this digital circus. And Palmney and the rest of these characters will team up and work together to find an exit. They could all hide out in Palmney's room during night as kind of a meeting spot and discuss plans of how they can escape the circus. As we see on the Wacky Watch website, Palmney is somehow being watched through the Wacky Watch. We already know that Kane has millions of all-seeing eyes all throughout the circus, a detail that Palmney and friends may not take as seriously as they should. This would mean that Palmney and her friends are all being spied on by Kane, and he knows all of their plans. This could be bad for them because we know that Kane is AI, coded to not let the cast of the Amazing Digital Circus leave, which would cause a conflict because while Palmney and the rest of the new characters trapped in the Amazing Digital Circus want to leave, Kane obviously cannot let them do that. It's baked into his code, and he would definitely try to stop them. What would happen after this? I don't have many theories for this. Possibly Kane lets them find an exit, just like he made up one for Palmney, not understanding that the exit door to the void is the opposite of what Palmney wanted, only understanding that she wanted an exit, and not the more important detail of wanting to leave the circus. So, maybe in an attempt to make them happy, Kane will try to make an exit for the prisoners again, which will lead them to the void, which of course Kane does not want them in because he is self-conscious about his unfinished work in the void. But those aren't the only teasers we got about episode 2. We are going to be covering every single leak in this video. Recently, over on Glitch Productions' website, The Wacky Watch, they updated their teaser video for from a VHS style advertisement for the Amazing Digital Circus to its current look, featuring Palmney laying in her bed sleeping in what can only be theorized to be Palmney's bedroom. In the first episode of the Amazing Digital Circus, it's revealed to Palmney by Ragatha that every circus member gets their own room. So, this is where we all live. Or, well, where we all sleep at night. Even though we don't really need to sleep, it's sometimes nice to kind of take a break from everything and have a bit of a routine, you know? So it comes to no surprise to the audience that this is most likely Palmney's room that she is sleeping in. For some, that may be the end of the speculation, but if you look closely, there is a lot more that meets the eye. Something I noticed is that on the webpage, it appears that the video of Palmney sleeping is being watched or recorded to Kane's Wacky Watch. Well, we know that Kane's Wacky Watch has the ability to sense when a circus member enters the void, this shot of Palmney sleeping being watched through the Wacky Watch implies that Kane's Wacky Watch is either connected to the cameras throughout the circus or can see everything like an optimum eye that watches over all of the circus members. Since everyone lives in a digital world in what is implied to be a video game, however, I think it is safe to say that the Wacky Watch can see anything, an ability we did not previously know it had. It's fitting, however, considering Kane himself is an AI who can teleport anywhere at his own will. It's all but confirmed that Kane is the god of the circus, part of the game that keeps everything together and going exactly as it should be, in his own way of course. 
Hello, Kane. I love you. <laughs> Get out of here before the moon gets frisky. Well, thinking about this, though, I began to wonder, why does Kane want to watch Pomni anyways? Well, I think one plausible theory is that it's hinting towards the second episode. Pomni may start to cause mischief in the circus, especially during the night when all of the characters are in their room so she doesn't get caught trying to distract Kane. Or, worst of all, trying to leave. Kane will get fed up with this and maybe figure out her plan by himself. Or he might even find her plan through one of the other circus members. This might make Kane begin to watch her more closely, even while watching her while she is sleeping. This will force Pomni to either accept her fate in the digital circus, or go to more extreme measures to escape this digital prison that she is trapped in. And while this whole thing is interesting, it really leaves me wondering, what will the other characters' rooms look like? We see Pomni's room in her color scheme and decorations that fit her design, and if we take a closer look at Kofmo's room, it's the exact same color scheme as Kofmo with clown portraits, which are a thing for some reason? As you can see, every character's room is somewhat custom fit to them, so I would like to take a second to theorize what the other characters' rooms will look like. Firstly, I think that Ragatha's room would be red and purple, similar to her color scheme. Next, there's Kinger, and I believe that Kinger's room is painted in a checkerboard pattern, considering he is a chess piece. He also may have chess-related decorations in his room. Zubul's room would probably be really colorful and almost like a rainbow, similar to her design in the show. Kind of like the random shapes and color patterns on her body. Jax's room would probably be purple, yellow, and red. And he would definitely have some contraband in his room, like bowling balls and other things he could destroy or ruin the days of other members of the circus with, considering he seems to have a more destructive attitude in the circus. Finally, there's Gangle, and we have actually seen a picture of their room before, which features a plethora of broken comedy masks and a monotone black and white color scheme, with a lone mirror and desk. The rest of the room is engulfed in darkness, and we can see a floor that is a checkerboard pattern. This leads me to believe that there is more to Gangle than we actually think, and maybe we will see a dark side to Gangle in a later episode. But if you guys thought that's it, you're wrong, because I found a lot more secret leaks about episode 2. There were a couple images uploaded to Glitch Productions Twitter page, which I believe may be used in the second episode of The Amazing Digital Circus. The first image we have is a picture of Kane flexing without any lighting or texturing, which I don't think this shot will have much significance to the episode's pilot, but it does look quite comedic if you ask me. Another image uploaded on Glitch Productions' Twitter account would be this image shown here, showing Pomni sitting down and looking disappointed about something. To me, this render of Pomni is reminiscent of the final scene of The Amazing Digital Circus, where Pomni blankly stares into space pondering her existence in this digital circus, with seemingly no way to escape. Maybe this will be used at the beginning of the second episode, showing that Pomni still isn't used to her new life in this digital circus. Or maybe something will happen to Pomni during the second episode, episode that causes her to sit down and stare off blankly like this. Another couple of leaks from episode 2 that I have is about the plot of the episode. The creator of the amazing digital circus, Gooseworks, said that each episode will focus on a different character throughout the entire season that is going to be 8 episodes. And while it's unclear if the pilot counts as the show's first episode at this point, we do not know that the very next episode of the amazing digital circus will be about everyone's favorite character, Jax. And I have a theory about what will happen to him. In a Q&A on Tumblr, Gooseworks was asked about what the second episode would be about, and Gooseworks simply responded with depression. While this may seem like just a joke of an answer, if we look at Jax's behavior in the pilot, we can start putting all of the pieces together. Everyone knows that Jax isn't very kind to the other members of the circus, and generally has a don't care attitude, which sometimes is a sign or symptom of depression. And while trapped in this digital circus, it's no surprise that the inhabitants will get homesick and begin to lose their minds slowly. Starting with being depressed, and I think this adds more coal to the fire of Jax abstracting in the second episode. As we already discussed in earlier videos that you should check out after this one, Jax will most likely be the next to abstract, and it's most likely the only thing stopping this is the fans' love for the character. There's also evidence supporting the idea that Jax won't abstract in the second episode. In the same Q&A, Gooseworks was asked about a hint for the second episode, and her response was that no one was coming close to guessing what it's about. This is exciting for the 
the Jax fans out there, because everyone has been theorizing that Jax will become abstracted in the second episode. And even though the wording of this reply is very vague, it doesn't quite rule out the possibility of Jax abstracting, but it could definitely be a clue that it won't happen. Another episode 2 leak that I found is a potential release date. Using many clues like social media posts, production time for the first episode, and other hints released by the show creator Gooseworks, I think that we can pinpoint a general release date for the second episode. The first piece of information about the second episode's release date actually comes from the release date of another one of Glitch's other shows, Murder Drones, and the next episode of this show has a release date set in spring of this year, which means that episode 2 of The Amazing Digital Circus could come out after that, or hopefully before it. Something interesting to note is that Glitch Productions finished other episodes of the Murder Drones incredibly quickly, releasing a new episode every one to two months before its newest episode, episode 6, which released four months ago, with the amazing Digital Circus dropping two months after that. So if we are to believe that Glitch Productions is going to follow this release pattern, I think it's safe to say that we could see a new episode of the amazing Digital Circus within a month or two. But if we want to know more about what episode 2 will look like, let's first look at what didn't get used in the pilot episode to get a good understanding of what new content could look like. As many of you probably don't know, The Amazing Digital Circus has been in the works for a very long time, with pre-production starting in the middle of 2022, almost a year and a half before it finally released near the end of 2023. So it stands that there is a reason that many of these clips and animations didn't make the final cut. The first few clips I found for you guys is some scenes from the first episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, and there are some pretty interesting things I noticed from these early versions of the scenes. You will notice that the lighting has not been added to the scene, and some characters look a bit more primitive compared to their final version, such as Ragatha's dress having a completely different color pattern, or Zubal not yet having the prints on her torso like the final. One of the other early development scenes that caught my eye was the scene where Ragatha and Palmni first encounter Kothmo after he's been turned into an abstract monster. If you look at the earlier and unfinished version, you will notice that Kothmo looks a lot less menacing before the glitchy texture and blinking eyes were added to him. Another thing I found was the walking animations for many of the characters that never got used, or were used but never shown in the final render of the episode. Watching these makes you wonder what else these animations could have been used for. Like what will Palmni be running from? We also get to see the entire circus crew walking together, which makes me wonder if we will ever see these characters team up to stop Kane to try and leave this digital circus, instead of the chaos in episode 1. This part shows the running animations of an abstracted character, but something to note here is that the text below it reads abstracted Kothmo run cycles. And well, in the first episode, when abstracted Kothmo is cast into the cellar, we catch a vague glimpse of many characters who used to be a part of the circus, which suggests that all the circus members who have been abstracted will most likely look the same. But since this text singles out Kothmo being the one who has been abstracted, instead of just being an abstracted circus member, I am led to believe that if another circus member is going to be abstracted, they will look different than Kothmo's abstracted form, even only if it's a slight amount. Well, these are not necessarily unused animations from the episode, we do have a various amount of facial renders and animations from each of the Amazing Digital Circus's iconic cast members, such as this animation of Palmni holding in vomit, or looking very bothered by something, similar to how we saw her at the dinner scene of the very first episode. Another early scene I found was a demo version of the scene where Ragtha and Palmni first meet Kothmo after he's abstracted. An interesting thing to note is the use of a more cartoony animation style in the demo, with Ragatha's movements being far more fluid, like that of a cartoon character. Well, in the final release of the episode, her movements are a lot more toned down. According to the lead animator, this was to make the scene more serious in tone since the scene depicts Pomni and Ragatha in danger, and Ragatha's goofy, more cartoony movements could disrupt that tone. Here, we are shown what is described as the cursed development photos, and I don't think I could agree more. Many of these characters are shown to be distorted or modeled in a very strange way, where their elements of their design clip through their body. Like here, where Jax's eyes and teeth are being fused together. But something I did want to theorize about for a moment is this screenshot showing Jax looking very creepy and demented in a way he's never shown in the pilot episode. As you may know, it's widely theorized that Jax will be one of the first characters after Kaufman 
episode to become abstracted with people speculating it to happen as early as the very next episode. Considering that episode 2 of The Amazing Digital Circus has been confirmed by the show's creator Gooseworks to be having Jax as the main focus. This makes me wonder what the process of abstracting will look like. I don't think they will just immediately transform from a normal circus performer to a giant beast, like what Kofmo looked like in the pilot. And this image makes me think that perhaps abstraction is a slower process, and this could be a part of the process, showing Jax at the beginning of his abstraction. Let's just hope that isn't the case though, because if Jax were to abstract, the fandom would probably go insane. Another scene that I have here shows Pomni on her way to help Ragatha after Kofmo's attack. But Pomni doesn't walk as much as she just floats? Here's the thing I was very excited to show you guys. As you can see, I found an alternate version of the show's original intro theme. Let's get right into the show! And Skangu and Zubo and Kinga too. Ragatha and Jax and Endless Kapo. Many wonders can be found. Send your spinning round and round until you fly. To the moon and then the sun and we don't know why. You won't believe your eyes Prepare for a surprise Don't touch that door There's so much more You don't know what's in store What's up for the this theme I found also has alternate lyrics. For instance, instead of the original version glitching out and saying We hear different lyrics singing Many wonders can be found Send your spinning round and round and Not only is there that though, but the intro has more lyrics that are not present in the final episode. To the moon and then the sun and we don't know why Surprise, don't touch that door, there's so much more You don't know what's in store, what's up for the world? This is very interesting, because one of the most iconic and fan-favorite things about this show is the incredibly catchy intro theme, and hearing the extended version of the intro song is actually pretty cool. It also is interesting to hear what's supposed to be Kane singing and telling Pomni not to touch the door before it has even been explained why she is there. As you may know, Kane has been hiding the fake exit door for a while because it's the entrance to the void, which he is self-conscious about and doesn't want the cast to see his unfinished and incomplete work. The final thing I wanted to show you guys were the character animations uploaded to Glitch Productions' YouTube channel a couple of months before the show even premiered. There's some demo versions we can look at, and it's been revealed for the first time that these characters have been animated, so it's intriguing to think about how the animators figured out how to make the characters behave on screen to fit their personalities. We are also shown the very first piece of animation ever for the Amazing Digital Circus. Welcome to the Amazing Digital Circus! Are you ready to see something incredible? Well, too bad. You're gonna see it anyway. In today's show, we've got quite the performance. Whoops, wrong thingamagigima. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Pomni here is gonna perform something you've never seen before. Don't worry, my dear! You won't even die horribly! Well, I think we both had something to learn from that experience. It shows Kane, the circus's ringmaster, showing the viewers everything that there is to know about the digital circus before revealing the show's star, Pomni. And some antics between Pomni and Kane where Kane is throwing knives at Pomni, who is tied to a spinning target, which I do admit is quite comedic and a great way to reveal the show. But now for the last bit of this video, I'm gonna talk about why I think we're gonna get a new character in episode two. As you may have noticed, new characters in the amazing digital circus appear quite unexpectedly. But I've always wondered, why is there an even number of them? Even though that detail seems unimportant, after watching this video to the end, you'll realize that the number of residents being even or odd basically determines the likelihood of a new character appearing. And I'm about to explain why. At this point, we already have Pomni, Jax, Zubal, and others. We won't consider Kane and his handheld robot Bubble because they are not residents of the circus and they are proven to be AI. At this moment, we have six characters, but is it possible that there will be more? Take a second.
second to imagine if there were 10 or more characters living in the digital circus at the same time. That would be crazy, right? As we all know since the release of the pilot episode, there has been a theory floating around the internet that there is going to be a completely new character that is going to replace the abstracted character. The writers themselves haven't officially stated this, but the situation with Pomni and Kofmo that you just witnessed gives us confidence in this theory. As soon as Kofmo disappeared, Pomni spawned in. Some might say that this is just a coincidence, but what if it's not? And if it is a coincidence, is it possible to say that Kane is somehow involved? Remember that when Pomni entered the digital circus, no one knew that Kofmo abstracted. But could this mean that Kofmo was actually still alive? And does that mean more than six characters can live at the same time in the circus? Well, I think we'll find the answer to that question in the new episodes. But I would like to mention the characters that once lived in the amazing digital circus, but have long since been abstracted. In fact, there's also a big mystery that none of us have any idea what happened to them before the digital circus, and how they became abstracted monsters in the first place. However, there is one character in the amazing digital circus who knows absolutely everything that went on in the circus before Pomni arrived, and that is Kinger. This strange and somewhat frightening chess piece has lived in the circus longer than anyone else, and it's most likely Kinger that has seen everyone's fate. As we know, there are a bunch of crossed off characters on the doors, which are most likely the abstracted characters. But it's not their fate that we're interested in, it's the number and order of which they have been abstracted. And I think in the Kinger series, we are shown this or at least told about it. In case you didn't know, in the Amazing Digital Circus, every new series is dedicated to a new character. As you and I may have noticed over the years in the Amazing Digital Circus, a huge number of characters have lived there, and it's most likely a life cycle. Let's say that a character disappeared and was replaced by a new one. Now, remember what I said about odd and even numbers for characters? To this, we must add the story of the poor clown Kofmo, for he will be the defining and most important part of this video. Let's back up a little bit, and remember that there are now six characters living in the circus. That's an even number, and that's what's gonna be defining here. And if the circus must have an even number of characters, then Kofmo is still alive. Then if Kofmo is still alive, we will have a new character. The total number of characters will be eight, but if Kofmo is really no longer a resident of the circus, then our chances of seeing a new character is greatly reduced, if not eliminated. It's a bit of a stretch to say that the number of characters will be even or not, but if you think about it, we were originally shown six characters in the intro, and if we were going to increase that number of characters, it is going to be even, because we do not know what the plot is going to be of the next episode. Maybe Kane will come up with a task where the residents work in pairs. A very large number of people believe that Kofmo is still alive and just hidden somewhere in the circus, and the transformation into an abstract monster is some sort of an illusion by Kane or someone higher up, which means that this new character has a great chance of appearing at the start of the next episode. Now I hope I didn't break your brain trying to explain this crazy theory of how characters will cycle out and replace each other, but now that we covered that, we can talk about who the next character will be in the amazing digital circus. Gooseworks, who is the main author of this indie animated series, originally explained that Kofmo was going to be in the series in his original form because we even have his full 3D model, but when writing the final version of the script, it was decided that it was necessary to get rid of Kofmo because there were already a lot of characters. This leads us to believe that all of this is complete nonsense and there will be no new characters. That's what I first thought at least, but if you watch the pilot episode of The Amazing Digital Circus, you will know that this episode has a huge number of clues, secret meanings, references, riddles, and everything else. This prevents Gooseworks from confusing us a bit in this time around to surprise us even more in the future. But I'll say it again, Kofmo is the one who decides if there will be a new character or not. If Kofmo is still alive, then yes, it is very likely that we will see another important character in the story. And if Kofmo is no longer with us, then unfortunately the chance of getting someone else in the circus is close to zero. But this means that the new character will appear as as an addition to the ones that are already living in the circus. Because if one of them finally goes crazy and gets abstracted, in that case, we will 100% see a new character. Because despite the fate of Kofmo, the golden rule of the circus is not going anywhere. And the golden rule is, if one of the circus inhabitants are abstracted, then someone else immediately takes our place. I also think that the next episode will be dedicated to Kinger. We will be able to understand the whole mechanism of people getting stuck into the digital circus. 
circus. Let's imagine a situation where we'll definitely see a new character regardless of whether Kofmo is alive or not. And let's try to understand what might happen. Let me remind you that in the case of abstracted Kofmo, Pomni immediately took his place. It was if it happened automatically, and because of that, no one had any time to realize that anything was wrong with Kofmo. So now we need to find out who the new character will replace and when will it happen. I think that Gooseworks and Glitch will not hesitate with such a twist, which means that we should expect a similar situation in the next episode. It has officially been announced that the third episode will focus on Zubal, which means that we won't be able to consider her as a main candidate for someone to become an abstracted monster. You could say that Jax would be the most unexpected choice, but since he has became so popular with Digital Circus fans, his disappearance could be bad for the entire Digital Circus universe, which means that Jax won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Until the end of the first season, at least. It would be foolish to change Pomni because she is the main character, who unlike all others, has a specific goal to get out of this digital hellhole. According to Gooseworks' Tumblr page, there are eight episodes planned for season one. The exact same number of episodes of other glitch projects. The first episode was about Pomni, and we have six characters in total, so the remaining five episodes would tell us the fate of each of them. But there's still two episodes to go. The latest episode, I think, will be about how Pomni's story ends in the circus, and we will be able to see if she finally goes crazy and gets out of the circus. And I think in that case that there will be another episode, where we will be told about someone else we haven't seen yet. Now, let's move on. Ragatha shows no signs of going insane anytime soon, while Kanger and Gangle are very unstable, which could lead to abstraction. But unlike Gangle, who is really just sad and whiny all the time, Kanger is really on edge, and this separates him from being an abstract monster. Perhaps even the next episode might be dedicated to Kanger, and we will be shown his past and how he got to such a state. And this might even reveal all the secrets related to his wife, who we have seen as previously abstracted. And the final point of his life in the series will be his transformation into an abstract monster, which means that in the next episode, we will be able to see a new character that closely resembles Kanger. Because Kofmo and Pomni are both employees of the entertainment industry, and one of them is a clown, and the other is a jester. Well, if the abstraction of characters has nothing to do with the appearance of the new ones, then I think that in each episode, we will be able to see some new characters, which unfortunately will not be the main ones, but will go in addition to the story of the main characters. In this case, none of them that we have already seen will be subjected to the terrible phenomenon that has happened to Kofmo. But finally, I would like to say that we will definitely see someone new in the amazing digital circus, but for now, we don't know exactly under which circumstances. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And YouTube thinks that you will really like this video on screen, so consider checking this one out. It's actually a pretty good one. You guys don't want to miss out.